the surface area of the cone produced by revolving the line about the y-axis. This is what you would get if you took an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper and folded it in half along its diagonal. Then you have the line that's 8.5 by 11. Instead of rotating this entire triangle this time, what I want to do is rotate just the one line. And as I rotate it around the, x uh, the y-axis, I will in fact produce a hollow cone like this. I want to know what the surface area is on this cone. Now you could look it up, or you could remember that by the theorem of Pappus and Gildanus, the area, surface area is equal to 2 pi r bar l, where l is the length of the line, and r bar is the distance from the axis of revolution to the centroid of the line. This goes from the y-axis to the centroid of the line. Well, we have to figure out what the centroid of the line is. Remember that the definition of the centroid of the line says that this is the integral of x dl over the integral dl. Well, the integral dl is just l. So we can find that using the Pythagorean theorem. This is 11 squared plus 8.5 squared, which is the square root of 773 over 2, 13.9 inches. That's the length of the line. The integral of x dl, I have to figure out what dl is. dl is still the square root of dx squared plus dy squared, or in this case, the square root of 1 plus dy dx quantity squared times dx outside of the square root. How do you find dy dx? You have to find y. But y is a nice mx plus b line where the slope is a rise of 11 over a run of 8.5 with no intercepts. So that's y. dy dx is the derivative. It's just 11 over 8.5. I can plug this into that and take the square root of 1 plus 11 over 8.5 squared and you get 1.635 dx for dl. Now I can take the derivative. x bar is the integral from x travels from 0 to 8.5 of 1.635x dx divided by the integral dl which was 13.9. If you work that out you get x bar is 17 over 4 which is 4.25. Now, what have you learned here? You've learned that the centroid of a line, the centroid of a straight line, is in the middle. This is exactly what you would expect. Of course the centroid of the straight line is in the middle. It's as symmetric as you can get. And in fact, you could say that the centroid is located exactly in the middle. It would have to be 11, 11 over 2 up and 8.5 over 2 in. So, in general, all of this you could skip if you happen to know that the centroid of a straight line is in the middle. It is very symmetric. Your surface area of the cone is 2 pi times 4.5 2, 4 times 13.9. This gives you a surface area of 371.2. Remember that this is going to be in inches squared. Surface area is just inches squared, not inches cubed. It's not a volume. You could go back and check this by some sort of Wikipedia entry, and you would find that, in fact, the surface area of, of a cone is pi r times the square root of r squared plus h squared, which is what we had here. The pi, we have 2 pi times r over 2, which is just this pi r part, times the square root of r squared plus h squared, which is the length of the line. In either case, whether you remember this formula which is more difficult, or you remember that the center of the straight line is in the middle, you can very quickly find the surface area for an, a body of revolution using the theorem of Pappas and Gilgamesh.